What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of Club and Country. This is episode number 102 and we start today's episode off with a game against Spurs here at El Sardinero. So Mauricio Pochettino has guided his Spurs side into the Champions League round of 16 and Spurs are going to come and take us on here at El Sardinero for the Champions League round of 16 first leg. And of course we got for our group stage after winning the final group stage game against Anderlet. Uh, Bayern Munich topped the group, we finished second. So taking on Spurs here, you know, to be honest I was quite surprised to be drawn against Spurs. You know, I thought we might be facing someone like, um, I don't know really, maybe just someone like Barcelona or Real Madrid. I guess just whenever I face an English side in the Champions League and I'm managing a foreign side, I always find it interesting. I don't know why, I guess probably because I'm from England, you know, I always find it kind of fun. But even so, we do take on Spurs and the first chance to game would actually fall in the 13th minute as Eric Lamella finds Nasa Chadley. Chadley crosses the point towards Dumbia. It's not really dealt with and Stambouli finds Christian Eriksen and what a stop this is by Ruben Blanco. Absolutely superb save by our goalkeeper who for the life of me I can't understand how he's only gone up by one rating this season. As per usual, he's been consistent and reliable as ever. What a great save that is, and it's still goalless. So, brilliant save by the goalkeeper. And in the 34th minute, a great chance for us to take the lead here as Keiko finds Hesse Rodriguez. Rodriguez finds Oliver Torres. Torres holds the ball up here, keeps hold of it, plays it back inside towards Rodriguez, and his strike goes just wide of the post and behind for a goal kick. So, a great chance there. Rodriguez should have scored, but it was still 0 0. In the 39th minute, we come forward again. Oliver Torres does find Hesse Rodriguez. Rodriguez gets taken out by Paulinho here and wins us a free kick but Paulinho the Brazilian midfielder ends up getting a straight red card for this challenge as Spurs are down to 10 men five minutes before the halftime break and I was really surprised about it because it was a really bad challenge by Paulinho he came in from well the side really not exactly right from behind although it was sort of behind and to the side if that makes sense it was a bad challenge but whether it warranted a red card or not I wasn't too sure I guess you can see why the referee gave it so I'm certainly not complaining and I don't think it was too debatable but I think on another day Paulinho Paulinho might have got a book in. It was, it was a definite foul. It was a definite book in. Whether it warranted a red, I'm not too sure. It was one of those where some referees would give a red, some referees would give a yellow. This referee gave a red, thankfully for us though, and Spurs are down to 10 men. And from that free kick, Rodriguez stands over it and strikes it. He ends up taking a massive deflection off the wall and Hugo Lloris has to tip it behind for a corner. So still goalless in this game, but now with Spurs down to 10 men, we were going to be the side in the ascendancy. And directly from kickoff, we came forward here as Oliver Torres roulettes around his man, holds it up and finds Hesse Rodriguez starting up top in this game as a striker plays it off towards Oliver Torres Torres gets taken out but it comes to Keiko Keiko turns out to Okoto and shoots but Lloris makes a brilliant save and keeps it goalless so a great save there by the French goalkeeper and it was still 0-0 and 10 minutes after the restart here Keiko comes forward and finds Oliver Torres Torres holds on and plays it back towards Keiko Keiko gets, uh, gets it past his man and finds Elise lovely ball inside towards Rodriguez what a finish it is by Hesse Rodriguez the former Real Madrid man does open the scoring for us but it's disallowed for offside and what a shame because that was a lovely ball through by Elise and a brilliant finish by Hesse Rodriguez. What a superb strike it was, but he is just offside. It was so tight. Honestly, when the ball was played forward at first, I thought it was definitely onside and the linesman was just pulling my leg, but sadly not. It was the, uh, well, I guess it was the correct decision. It was very tight though, and it was still nil-nil. So still goalless in this game. 20 before the end here, Elise finds Keiko. Keiko finds Oliver Torres, and Torres has his shot well saved by Lloris in fine form in this game, and it was still goalless. And 15 minutes before the end, Hesse Rodriguez finds Young Han Elise. Elise plays that wide towards Danny Carvajal. The former Real Madrid right back finds Andy Kappa down the right hand side, takes on Asu Okoto, back heels it towards Carvajal. Uh, Carvajal finds Hesse Rodriguez and he can't keep his shot down and he blazes the ball way over the bar. And it was how the game would finish as well. So, final score Racing Santander nil, Spurs nil. And I think the best way of summing up that game was that it was missed opportunities for us. You know, we had a lot of chances. Spurs were down to 10 men in the first half. We just couldn't take the chances we had. And, you know, Obviously, uh, returning to uh, to White Hart Lane, we'll be very pleased to know we didn't concede an away goal. But you know, it's it's going to be tricky a, a tricky tie for us away from home, as you can see Morata coming back from injury now, which is great. And to be honest, I'm I'm not going to say that we you know we're going to be the underdogs going into that game at White Hart Lane. I think it's still going to be nicely poised, and it's going to be a really really interesting uh, game for us in the second leg. But you know, it, it's missed opportunities, man. Like we should have won that game, and I mean that. I mean, I know when you think about this Racing Santander side, you know, taking on uh, taking on Spurs, our, our team still isn't where we want it to be right now, even though it's made brilliant improvements since the first season, obviously. Um, but, you know, I, I think we should have won that game personally, and I'm really frustrated to know that it was it was myself, really, just making really poor attempts on goal. That, that final one with Hesse Rodriguez kind of summed it all up. Nice passing, and I just couldn't get the end product right. So, anyway, final score, 0-0. I'll stop rambling on about it. I'm trying to be more positive in this series. So, we just say that we're glad we didn't concede the away goal, and the tie is still nicely poised. Uh, still following out a U-Score monthly report, and also a squad report as well, so you can see how the players are currently doing in the team 
team right now. Uh, some very healthy attribute changes. Grimaldo is now up to an 80, so we now, we now have another 80 plus rated player in our team, which is very nice indeed. Uh, currently, the youth player is looking pretty nice. Uh, Rubinho is developing pretty nicely as well. That's good to see for a player who doesn't play too much. Ayosa Perez is now up to an 81 overall. That's really nice to see. We now got two strikers that are plus 80 right now. And of course, Rodriguez can play striker. He's now 84 too. Paco Candela, 75. Obviously, there are some players that I'm really disappointed about. Oliver Torres being one. Borja Lopez being another. Ruben Blanco being another as well. I briefly showed you his stats. How he's only gone up by one rating, I do not know. But that's FIFA for you. And also, a look at the league table. 12 games to go. We are three points behind Barcelona right now. Uh, we do have a better head-to-head -head record after one game. Of course, we did beat them at the new camp. But even so, we've got the second leg to come. Uh, the second game against Barcelona to come, I should say, in the next episode. So that'll be kind of interesting to see what happens there. But um, yeah, even so, right now, we're still in the title race. We're still in the Champions League. We're in the Copa del Rey final. Got to be more positive. I've got to be more positive. I know sometimes I get a bit too negative, but I've got to be more positive right now. Uh, still, we take on Rayo Vallecano for the second and final game of today's episode here. Uh, sorry, the second of three games in today's episode here. Uh, Rayo Vallecano currently sitting in 19th place right now. So you definitely fancy a chance of winning this game, despite being held to a goal to destroy El Sardinero uh, in midweek against Spurs. But as you can see by the team I picked here, as you can see, it was our strongest first 11 with one change. Porto came in for Elise due to him being quite tired for the game. So uh, just one change to the uh, usual first 11. I definitely fancied our chances of winning it despite being away from home. The first chance would actually fall to Rio Villacana though in the 16th minute as they cross the ball in. The header is well saved by Ruben Blanco and turned behind for a corner. So good stop there by a goalkeeper and it's still goalless. And a couple minutes after that here, they almost took the lead after I gave the ball away stupidly with Porto. Didn't see the uh, Rio Villacana player there. Tried to play it back to Carlos Blanco. He intercepted the pass and almost made it 1-0. Made me pay but it was still goalless. In the 45th minute on the stroke of half time, another great chance for Rio Villacana there. They come forward and shoot but it goes into the side netting and behind for a goal kick. So in the first half it was all Rea Vellicano and to be honest with 10 minutes to go, I hadn't done anything in the game. I'd done basically nothing whatsoever. But as you clear this corner away it comes to Moy Gomez. Gomez takes it around Mario here, down the right hand side. Although he looks like he's going to lose it, he keeps on going, keeps holding the ball, plays it back towards the edge of the area, picks out Yosa Perez. Perez finds Rana Delgado and coming off the bench to score again is that man, the number four team. Rano Delgado, it's just crazy man, like I don't think, well he probably has scored a couple of goals since starting a game before, but I don't remember them, every single goal, pretty much every single goal he scores is always coming off the bench, he is the super sub, he hasn't scored too many goals this season, but he scored a couple of crucial ones, and this could be as crucial as they come, Rano Delgado makes it 1-0 to Racing Santander with 10 minutes to go, and it was how the game finished as well, and I've got to be honest here, it was one of the most undeserved victories ever, that was pretty much my only attempt in the entire game, and you know, Ray Villacana being 19th place, us being in second, with us being the first team, uh, having the first team out there, you probably expected us to run away with the game. Not at all. It was very, very poor. I was terrible in that game. And let's just say we really did get away with that one. But even so, delighted to win the game. We keep the charge alive. We still haven't lost the game since the Atletico Madrid game all the way back in December. We're on a fantastic unbeaten streak right now. And it's really, really pleasing for us. So even in those games where we don't play too well, we're still picking up the results. And I think that is a really, really encouraging sign for us because we're not feeling sorry for ourselves we're not playing poorly and you know struggling to pick up points we're still getting the results when we need to dig deep and pull them out of the hat so we do win the game by a goal to nil again a poor game we came through the win and that is the most important thing uh, still we take on Granada for the third and final game of today's episode here as they come and take us on El Sardinero uh, obviously we wanted a better performance than the Rio Vallecano game but hopefully going to get the same result as well and the first chance fell in the fourth minute as Correa Amada goes down the right hand side and Berber spins around his man then a quick little turn to beat the man who goes for the challenge it comes towards Ander Capri who strikes it on the half volley but Roberto turns behind for a corner and keeps it at 0-0 and in the 44th minute we had another corner here we're on the area Guza stands over the ball crosses the ball into the centre looking for Alban Toza who does win the header but it's tipped over the bar by Roberto and it is still goalless in this game so Alban Toza looking to make it 1-0 here a much change harassing Santander's side but it was still goalless and from the corner again it's the same result a Guza to Alban Toza but sadly he can't keep his head down and it goes over the bar so still harassing Santander 0 Granada 0 as for, uh, things stood and in the 24th minute here Marion Schwartz gets on the ball for us and goes down the left hand side with Alban Ibrahim. Al Ibrahim takes it around his man with a quick little fake shot, gets inside, tries to play it to Ronnie Ariguza, picks him out, and you know, it was just like the Rio Vallecano game. Not enough was happening, there wasn't enough urgency. We were looking for something, either a piece of magic, a stroke of fortune, or something. And in the end, it's a piece of magic by Ronnie Ariguza, who has lost his place in the first 11 for the first time since signing a pro contract, as he hasn't been developing for some reason. I don't know why, but what a strike that is by Ariguza. Absolutely wonderful goal by our young midfielder. He blasts 
past the ball from range. It goes into the top corner and there is no chance for the goalkeeper. Aguza primarily known for his great passing skills. What a goal that is. Maybe I should start taking more shots from range of him. What a goal that is. No chance for the goalkeeper. And it is Racing Santander 1 at Granada 0. Aguza with a goal and we are delighted with that because again, just like the Real Villacana game, we weren't doing enough. It was really, really poor. But thankfully for us, late on, we are surely going to rescue the three points thanks to that superb strike by Ronnie Ariaguza. And straight after that, he gets subbed off the pitch. That was his last kick of the game. So Racing Santander 1, Granada 0. Aguza with the goal. And I did think it was kind of funny that as soon as he scores, probably the best goal of his career so far, he ends up getting subbed off straight after the pitch. But as I go to the sliders here, just to prove stuff, you know, um, you can see the, uh, the match stats there just briefly. We'd had four shots, two on target compared to their, what was it, one and zero, I think it was, yeah. And it was just, it was such a poor game. And, you know, just like the Rio Villacana game, just not enough urgency, not enough, you know, intense pressure from us, really, against the side we really should be beating. And I just wasn't really happy with it. And you see Blanco makes a good save here, we get the ball away. The final chance would actually fall here in the 83rd minute as Granada played the ball forward. We failed to deal with it properly, but as Diaz Miguel loses out in the air, Larson plays it out wide. The ball is crossed into the box, and thankfully for us, Blanco makes a great save and keeps it at 1 0. We do win the game, but even though we're not performing to our best levels right now, we're still getting the results. That's the most important thing, and we continue this charge in the title race. But that is going to end the episode, guys. So, as always, a big thank you for watching the video. I really hope you have enjoyed it. If you enjoyed today's episode of Club and Country, then please do leave a like, it's much appreciated, and it really does help my channel out. But of course, you don't have to if you don't want to. And I'll see you for the next episode of Club and Country very soon.